Right, so we were looking at uh, connected subsets of Rn and we were trying to prove a theorem. We had given illustrations of that theorem, namely uh, A contained in Rn is connected if and only if every function f from A to Two point set zero one continuous is constant. So, we looked at many consequences of this theorem. So, let us give a proof. So, suppose A is connected. and f is a function from a to 0 1 f continuous. So, it is a function continuous function on a taking two values 0 and 1. We want to show it should be taking only one value, it should be a constant function. right? So, if f is not constant, then what will happen? There is at least one point where it takes the value 0 and some other point where it takes the value 1. Then let us look at the inverse image of 0 and inverse image of 1. So, all the points which go into 0 and all other points which go into 1 are non-empty proper subsets of A, right? Because there is a point which goes to 0, there is another point which goes to 1. So, that means 0 has a pre image, 1 has a pre image, right? And so, they are non empty. And this pre image is of 0 and 1, they are not whole of A because different points uh, are going to 0 and 1. Okay. The only observation is that uh, this set So, let us observe f inverse of 0 and f inverse of 1 are both closed subsets of A. They are both closed subsets of A. Right? Is that okay for everybody? It is both closed subsets? Because if you take a sequence in f inverse of 0 x n converging to x, then f of x n is equal to 0 for every value. So, f of x also is equal to 0. Right. Or you can look at singleton is a closed set. Okay. So, inverse image of closed set must be closed by definition of continuity. Okay. So, are both closed subsets of A and A is equal to f inverse of 0. Every point of uh, f inverse of 1 every point of A either goes to 0 or 1. So, inverse image should cover everything. So, what we are saying? So, this uh, f inverse of 0, so you can look at that uh, f inverse of 0 is a subset. What is this complement in A? That is f inverse of 1. So, that is close, right? So, its complement is f inverse of 0. So, both are open and closed subsets of A, because both are f inverse 0 is closed, its complement is f inverse of 1. 
which is also closed. So that is both open and so and further f inverse of 0, f inverse of 1 are both open and closed subsets of A and that is not possible contradicting this contradicts connectedness of A, right? because if A is connected it should not have any non-empty proper subset which is both open and closed. So, let us look at the converse, conversely let let us have the property that every function, every continuous function every continuous function f a to 0 1 is every continuous function is constant function. So, that is given to us to show a is is connected, right. So, that is what we are showing. So, if not again by contradiction suppose not, then there exists a non empty subset u of a proper non empty subset of a which is both open and closed in A. So, there is this a non empty proper close uh, non empty proper uh, subset U of A which is both open and closed because it is not connected. So, it should have. Now, here is uh, something which we will find useful later on also consider let us look at the function f defined on A taking values in 0 1. So, how I am going to define f of x is equal to 0 if x does not belong to A and it is 1 if x belongs to A. Okay. Oh, sorry, not uh, no, sorry, not A. A is the the main. So let us uh, the set I want to write is U. We have a set U which is both open and closed. It is proper. It is non-empty. So define f of x to be equal to zero if x belongs to U. And uh, x does not belong to U. And if x belongs to U, the put the value to be equal to one. So it is defined everywhere, right? On A. Okay. Is this function continuous? You want to know is this function continuous? No? Okay. To check continuity, what we have to check? What is f inverse of 0? Okay. Let us check any inverse image of every closed set is closed. Okay. So, what are closed subsets in the range? Either empty set, right, or singleton 0 or singleton 1. What is inverse image of empty set? Empty set itself, right. There is nothing which is going into anything. So, that is closed, okay. What is inverse image of 0? That is precisely u, no, not in u. So, that is u complement. Is u complement closed? Because we have assumed u is both open and closed. What is inverse image of 1? That is u, which is again closed. What is left? Is the whole 0 and 1 together. What is the inverse image of 0 and 1 together? Of the range that is the domain. The whole space is always closed, right. So, inverse image of 
closed sets are closed, so this function is continuous because let us write inverse image is of are closed. Okay, but it is not constant. But this is not constant. But f is not constant. It is not constant function because on u it takes the value, on uh, u it takes the value one, on u complement it takes the value zero, and the proper subsets. So there are points in u, there are points in u complement. So this is a contradiction. Because what was our assumption? Our assumption was whenever we have a function, right, which is continuous in 0, 1, it should be constant. So we have produced a function which is not constant, but it is continuous. Okay, so that is a contradiction. So that proves the theorem which we uh, saw has lot of implications in giving examples of connected sets in Rn. This is a very uh, typical uh, function, so let me probably uh, put a remark or a note. Let x be any set, any set. Okay. And let us say y a subset of x. Okay. So the function, if I define a function f like we defined earlier on x in 0, 1, f of with values f of x is equal to 1 if x belongs to y and it is 0 if x does not belong to y. This is the kind of example that we had in our proof right? for the set u. So, what is this function doing? On any set x, this is any set x, look at a subset y of it. So, look at a subset y. Okay. So, this is the function defined on the whole space x. So, this is y complement. Okay. So, what does it do? on y it gives the value, the value is on y the value is 1 and on y complement the value is 0. So, it, it is kind of thing if the point lies in the set y a light goes up, right. If it is in y complement light does not go up, right. On off true false it takes only two values. So, you will find this kind of thing coming in uh, probability theory. So, this function indicates when the point is in the set A. When the point is in A, it takes the value 1, non-zero value. So, this is called, this function is called, this is called the indicator function. of the set of the set y. So, this is called the indicator function of the set y okay, denoted by this is a uh, Greek letter called chi. So, this is chi, chi lower a indicating it is the indicator function of A. So, it is defined on the whole space, oh sorry, uh, we have taken not A, we have taken it as Y, defined on the whole space taking values in 0, 1. The indicator function of Y at a point X is equal to 1 if X belongs to A and is 0 if X does not. Ah. Why I am writing A again and again Y and belongs to, does not belong to Y. On the complement it is 0, on the set it is 0. This is called the indicator function of, right. 
uh, the simplest kind of function. Actually, this function has a beautiful history that uh, historically, when the notion of function was not defined properly, uh, there was a mathematician called Drishle uh, who gave this example to indicate that functions can be very simple, taking very only two values, right? But they need not be given by a formula. You can't have a formula for this f, right? So till Richley gave that example, everybody believed that a function should have a formula or a graph, right? So this was the beginning of abstract notion of a function. Okay, and uh, here are some properties which, if you have not come across, you should. Uh, uh, so what is? We have got uh, y contained in x. What is the indicator function of x? Complement of x is zero. Uh, I'm sorry, empty set, right? It's not so. This is constant function one. Okay. Let us look at uh, two sets A and B, subsets of x. What is A intersection B? So you can I, I leave with these are very they are simple exercises. So uh, you try to prove it. That is this chi of A multiplied with chi of B. And third, chi of A union B. This uh, square kind of union means. A and B are subsets of X, and A intersection B is empty. Okay, they are disjoint sets. Then this is chi of A plus chi of B. Uh, very nice properties of such a, sub, such a simple function. And uh, for example, you can also ask what is um, in general when they are not disjoint. This is chi of A plus chi of B, it will be counting intersection twice. So, minus indicator function of A intersection B. So, you can think of already a probability theory coming into picture kind of a thing, right. And 5, uh, okay, what more? Yeah, I think this is nice. What is chi of, uh, does everybody know what is the set A delta B? So, this is a set A delta B is called the symmetric difference. This is A minus B union B minus A. So, this set is called the symmetric difference of A and B. From A, this is same as A union B minus A intersection B. Okay. So, in pictorially, if this is A, this is B, then this is A intersection B. And what is uh, the symmetric difference? The symmetric difference is precisely, so this is A minus B and this is B minus A. So, this is A minus B and this is B minus A and this part is A intersection B. So, symmetric difference. Okay. So, what is uh, this equal to? One can show it is the absolute value of chi of A minus chi of B. So, these are very useful uh, uh, properties of the indicator function. Okay. These are functions, nothing, uh, no continuity, nothing involved. Okay. So, you can Right. So, uh, we looked at uh, connected subsets of R n. We gave examples of that. So, we have looked at various properties of uh, compact sets, connected sets in both in R and R n. Okay. We also looked at one uh, nice class of functions. Probably, I should state some of the properties of that. We looked at a function, monotone function. Some properties probably I should state more, right? 
So, uh, a function f defined on d contained in r is monotone, remember if x 1, x 2 belonging to d, x 1 less than or x 2 implies f of x 1 is less than f of x 2. Uh, okay. If x 1 is strictly less than x 2 implies f of x 1 is strictly less than f of x 2, that was strictly increasing. So, the strictly monotone, this is strictly increasing, uh, increasing. So, monotonically increasing, let me write arrow up saying monotonically increasing less than or equal to strictly when the inequality is strict okay. and so on. So, we looked at various properties. We showed that f monotone implies f is continuous or let a better way of writing that would be uh, the number of discontinuity f has at most countable number of discontinuities. Right? That we showed. Every monotone function is discontinuous. The only possible discontinuities are the jump discontinuities, and they are at the most countable. Okay. Here is a, a interesting thing, which uh, is a very deep theorem. Probably I'll uh, say it when we come to differentiability. Every monotone function, in fact, is differentiable. Where? So, uh, there is a notion of what is called sets of length 0. So, probably I will state it later on when we come to differentiability. Okay. Or, okay, I will come to it later. I think let us not go into this now, but that is a very interesting theorem which uh, and a deep theorem which analyzes differentiability of monotone functions also. Right. So, uh, uh, what do I want to say is the following. So, let us look at a monotone function f monotone what kind of a uh, is a monotone increasing or decreasing. So, here is let us try to draw a picture of it. So, this is uh, somewhere a and this is b. So, say it is a monotone function. Okay. So, it starts somewhere, this is a value at the point A. Say it is monotonically increasing, so probably it goes up like this, and then there is probably there is a discontinuity, it goes like this, and maybe it remains constant somewhere, and then again starts going up like this. So, this is a value at the point B. So, this is f of A and this is f of B. Now, uh, what we want to analyze is how much it is a monotone function, how much it can vary, how much the values of the function fluctuate in the interval a b, right. Some very value goes up, some value goes, how much is that fluctuation? We want to analyze that. So, that kind of thing is measured by something called the variation. So, let us write uh, definition and then we will come back to this kind of a function called monotone. So, f is a function defined on an interval a b to r. So, this is the interval a b. Let us look at what is called a partition of the interval a b. So, let p so, a equal to x 0 less than x 1 less than x n equal to b. So, there are finite number of points in the interval a b. 
such a finite number of points is called a partition of AB. You are cutting up the interval into parts, B a partition. Where is A is equal to x0, x1, x2, x3, and xn minus 1 and xn. So, this is a partition. So, what we want to do is we want to look at the value of the function, say in general it will be xi uh, minus 1 and xi, right. So, look at the value of the function at xi and value of the function at x i minus 1. What is the value at these two points? Right? We do not know which is bigger, which is smaller, but if you want to measure how much is that change in the value, let us look at the absolute value of the difference. So, that is the change in the value as you go from x i minus 1 to x i. It may be up or down, okay? we do not know. And look at total of this. Right? We are taken at a general point. So, the value value at A minus the value at this. Okay, this and this probably and this and this, and this and this and so on, kind of thing. Okay. So look at these differences. And this may be this. So this is how much the function varies at these endpoints, right? This is a variation of the function at these endpoints. So, this is given a name. So, this we call it as V, okay? variation from A to B of the function f with respect to the partition P. So, this is called variation of f is called the variation of f on a b that is a domain with respect to the partition with respect to the partition p of a b. So, it depends on the partition, right? Different partition it will be different, but let us observe this is always a non-negative quantity, right? Because it is sum of absolute values. So, note v a b f p is bigger than or equal to zero. It is a non-negative quantity. So, if I look at the variation of f over p, p a partition. If I look at these numbers, this is a subset of the real line, right? All are real numbers which are actually non negative, but we do not know whether it is bounded above or not. It may be bounded above, it may not be. If it is bounded above, it will have a least upper bound, right? So, let us write, so uh, call it supremum. Let us say the supremum of this, uh, let us write uh, V A B of F to be the supremum of this. So, what are the possibilities? This number, which is the supremum of these non negative numbers, may be a real number, or this set may not be bounded above. If it is not bounded above, we say the variation is infinite, right? If it is so, if V A B F is f, meaning what? This set is bounded above, and the supremum exists as a number. We say F has bounded variation. So, look at the variation of the function with respect to all partitions. If that is finite, supremum of that is finite, we say the function has finite variation. 
right or function is of bounded variation either way.